Hey, Pam. Oh, she's got her apron on today. <laughs> she's ready to go. <laughs> That's a cute apron. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, hey, Tatiana. Hello, Greg. I love that flower back there. <laughs> Thank you. I said, your head looks like it's the center of the flower. It like, it's like you have a flower hat on. <laughs> uh, that would be me. <laughs> oh. Hi, Betty. Uh, hey, Deb, we are live on Get Set Up, and uh, I've made you the host. You can make me co-host now. Thank you. All right, thanks. There you go. Oh, we have a lot of people to learn about muffin making today. That's exciting. Yeah. Comes Alma. Hi, Kathy. Hello. Is it is it Dilip? Dilip? Yeah. Hi. This is Hemayo. How do you say your name? Emma. Emma. Yeah. Okay. All right. That, so do you want to change your name up there in the corner, in the right-hand corner of your screen? Yeah, I could not do that. I actually, it's my husband's laptop. So that's why his name is being displayed. Okay. All right. That sounds yeah. good. Well, I will do my best to remember that, Ellen, El, Emma. And thank you for coming. Is this your first class with me? I think it might be. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonderful. I'm glad to have you. Hey, Linda, good to have you back. And there's Judy and Susan. Hi, Natalie. There's Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Good morning, Deb. Uh, I enjoyed yesterday's class so much that I'm back already. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Thanks for coming back. I think you're going to enjoy this today. Pam's really a uh, good at well she walked us through scones the other week and that was so good now she's back for more to teach us about muffins so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started and let me just ask this question though who besides Emma is brand new to my classes anyone new to my classes yep yep you're saying yes. That? yes. No, it's sorry. I'm, I can't. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi. <laughs> well, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Thanks Thank for you. today. Okay. Looks like we're, we may have some more people coming in. Let's give it some, a little bit of time here. Yeah, Deb, I've heard. Uh, some of the worst things you can buy at, at the store is like store, like if you were going to Walmart and Walmart's bakery is muffins. So uh, I, I just wanted, I need something else to have for breakfast. And uh, if I have to make them, I'd rather know that they're know what's in them than buy stuff that I don't need and, and not need to have to eat. So that's why I'm here. Amen, Greg. That's really a good, a good point because the baked goods at the grocery store are just loaded with everything that we don't need. Look at Pam. Pam's going, no. <laughs> you want to add to that, Pam? <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Look at the ingredients list and you're going to be like, your mind is going to cross. There's so many and there's so enzymes and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, some of those things that are on there probably are fine. We don't know. You know, they're just they just have names, but you know, wouldn't it be simpler if they just told us what the real name was and if we could recognize it? And so we we err on the side of caution to just not get things that we don't recognize the name of. So yeah. Hi Sylvie. Oh, hello. <laughs> Sylvie, are you new to my classes? Uh, maybe to these classes, but not to the um, get set up. I've, I've done 
quite a number of get set up, but not your classes. Okay, well, I'm glad to have you here for one of my classes and I hope Thank you'll come you. back. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. I, I want to welcome Pam Penny, who is going to be our co-host for today. She's a member of the community and we're always looking for folks who are interested in being a kind of co-hosts on our classes and bringing their talents, skills, interests to the classes. It just makes things more interesting as we get more variety. So keep that in mind, should you like to do what Pam's doing today, let me know. So my name is Deb Livingston, for those of you who have not met me before. And I live in York, Pennsylvania, where it is, uh, let's see, it's, it's uh, 12 o'clock. It's noon in York, Pennsylvania. And my background is in business. So I just had a nice chat with Victor a little bit ago. He's our, he's our TA here and he's here to help us with any uh, support issues that we, we might uh, have. And he was looking at the books behind me and we were having a conversation about the fact that those are all business books back there. But I'm thinking about taking them all down and packing them up and replacing them with cookbooks. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, maybe I will. And so anyway, to, just to speak a little bit more about Victor, I wanted to um, mention that he's also here because we've had some issues with some unwanted guests in our classes. So I wanted to just remind those of you who, who may know or may not know that that sometimes happens and that he's here to kind of protect us from that. It's also why we've enabled a waiting room and why you might have had trouble if you've tried to get into a class late. Uh, we put up, we've put a stopping point on that for right now. That's going to change. Things will change over time as our, as our, um, security measures get better and better, but it is to protect all of us from characters like that that are just unwanted. So if that's caused any inconvenience to you, we apologize for that. Anyway, this is me. I was business and learn, uh, leadership development, coaching, that sort of thing. And now I'm all about the food and get set up here. And I really enjoy that. I'm a, I'm a gardener, so I like to bring whole food into my cooking and I don't like all of those um, unknown ingredients that we talked about that Greg brought up. So when you're in a class with me, I really enjoy the interaction. I think it's important that, that we all learn from each other. We have a lifetime of cooking experience and expertise and knowledge and interests as well. So ideally, if you're on camera, it's a great way to be personal and be part of the kitchen. Sometimes you're in my kitchen, today you're in Pam's kitchen. You can request a recording of this class if you're interested at help at getsetup.io. And we are live streaming this class today. So I wanna say hello to any of you who are out there by live stream and invite you to come and join the class in the future. Just register, come in, join the room and be part of the conversation. We are sharing information as we go along. Sometimes we share product information and service information, but we do not have any financial relationship with those companies or individuals. So that's something that we want to pass on to you. So our agenda for today is pretty simple. We're going to introduce you to Pam, get to know her just a little bit. And then she's going to give us some easy muffin recipes and demonstrate those and talk about what she's learned over her time in, in making muffins. So she and I will go back and forth as we walk through the muffin making demonstration. And as we go, you can either unmute yourself and ask her questions because Pam, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, when you were doing the scone class, you said, it's okay to just interrupt me and ask questions. So you can feel free to do that. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can put the questions in the chat and I will also be looking there and, and asking Pam those questions. So whatever works for you is fine with us. And I think uh, when Pam and I talked about this session, she also had some other fun ideas that are semi-related to muffins and that she'll share with you as well. 
So we're going to have some plenty of Q&A at the end and some tips and a little bit of this and that that she has that I have and things we can talk about. So curious about what brought you here today. Is there besides, you know, you'd like some maybe muffin recipes, but is there is there a particular problem you have with muffin making? Is there a particular type of muffin that you would like to learn to make? What is it that brought you here today? Would you like to share? Just some new ideas for new uh, kinds of recipes because I do um, muffins a lot, so. You do muffins a lot. What kind of muffins do you make? Oh gosh. Uh, pumpkin, banana, blueberry, lemon. I mean, just so many. <laughs> All different kinds. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like Natalie says she likes blueberry muffins and she wants a healthy recipe. So Natalie, I know that you sent us a, an email to that effect. So we're going to send out a few recipes that are healthy muffin recipes that can give you some ideas for making change-ups to muffins to make them a little lighter, a little more healthy. Okay. So who else besides Kathy is baking muffins? And, and Natalie, who else is baking muffins? Yeah, yeah. And what is your favorite one, Linda? Uh, since we were at home during the first part of the virus quite a bit, I ended up with a lot of bananas. Uh, so I tried some, a couple of banana muffin recipes and I would appreciate the healthier version of it because I was kind of, I didn't make the quarantine 15, but I did have about five pounds to shake back off after a couple of batches of muffins. Okay, true confessions. Is anybody else in that boat? Yeah. So we could all use some healthier, lighter, lighter muffin recipes. Okay. And who else said they bake muffins now? And Natalie, blueberry, your favorite? or you Yes, blueberry is my favorite. And uh, we get um, blueberries down here in Wanata, Indiana. And I just want something healthy now. Okay. You know, well, all the sugar you put in there and the certain kind of flowers aren't good for you and stuff like that. Okay, so you're looking at changing out the sugar in the flour. All right, good to know. All right, who else? Okay. So what do you think is the most popular muffin? I, I'd say blueberry. It is the blueberry muffin. And, you know, we're going to stop this one second here. I'm going to go out of this and actually that's, we're saving that to the end because what I wanted to do was introduce you to Pam. I'm sorry. So I want to introduce you to Pam and get started with the demonstration and not run out of, out of time for demonstration, but we'll talk about those other things a little bit later. So I want to introduce you to Pam Penny and Pam, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and how did you get involved and get set up? Yeah, yep, I'm um, in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan and um, it's like Deb, she has kind of a different background than what she's doing now. My background is actually nursing, but my passions are baking, music, and art. So when I found Get Set Up, I was really excited to see all these different things you could learn and do that I could relate to. And then when I was asked about actually sharing some of my baking um, experiences, I was really excited to, because it's just not something I have ever been able to do, but it's something I really enjoy. So that's kind of how I got involved. Yeah, and we're really happy to have you here. And you have how many children? Yeah, three. I have one that just graduated, one that's still in high school, and one that's in elementary school. So, And they're all boys, right? No, I have two boys and one girl. Girls in the middle. You do so. have a girl in the middle. Okay. So you have a lot of mouths to feed and lots yeah. of muffins to make. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they were really excited that I had to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started and, and talk about your muffin recipes. What do you have for us today? 
Yeah, well, the favorite one in, in this household is a chocolate muffin. Um, blueberry, unfortunately, isn't a favorite, so I don't get to make those a whole lot. But that is a fun one to make because of the crumbles you can put on top and everything. But there is a, cho a moist chocolate muffin recipe that I found that I'm good with because there are some healthier components to it. So, um, so I make that one the most frequently. And for this one, what I, um, Deb was talking about mini muffins and if I've made those and I have in the past, but they've always ended up too dry or just not the right consistency. But I thought, well, what if I switched out that flour a little bit Would that help? So it would, wouldn't get so dry so quickly. So what I did, and I'll show today, is I did half of a white whole wheat flour, which is one of my favorites. And King Arthur, I showed this last time, they make this flour. I highly recommend using this if you want to try to switch out your flour a little bit. It's not as heavy as a whole wheat. It doesn't taste as grainy as a whole wheat. So it works really well for, for baked goods. Um, I went half and half. I don't know if I jump into 100% that whole wheat flour, but you could try it. It depends on what you like. So I made, I put one cup of white and one cup of that flour in the KitchenAid. So you can't see the ingredients in here, but that's this is where they are. Yeah. Pam, can you um, hold on just one second? I just want to remind you that if you want to get a closer view of Pam, you can go up, on, click on her picture in the right hand corner where it has the three dots and click on the three dots and and click on pin her to the first screen and you'll get a larger picture of her. Do you see her like that? And there you go. And can you also show us that flower again? And we'll put that in the chat. Yeah. This is anything by King Arthur. King Arthur white whole wheat flour. Okay. White whole wheat flour. Yep. I just found it at today at Target has it. You know, our Meyer, our, that's our big grocery store. They have it. Um, that is my favorite for baked goods when I'm trying to get more, you know, healthier flour in there. So this recipe also calls for, so you do the dry ingredients first. And so the other dry ingredients will be uh, half a cup of the cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder. We'll put that in there. Now this one Deb can help us with because this calls for a whole cup of sugar. So that's a lot of sugar. So I would recommend if you can figure out how to substitute it. I haven't experimented with those yet, so but I really need to for this recipe. So she can pipe in. <laughs> 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 well, a lot of the sugar replacements that are with sugar alcohols and stevia, which is what I tend to use most frequently, are measure for measure with sugar. However, if you need to make your things taste a little less sweet, which is always a good thing because we train our taste buds, you can take uh, that down by a third you can also just use one third less of granulated sugar and see how that goes. Experiment a little bit by each time you make it, make your muffins, take a little less sugar, you know, put a little less sugar in those muffins. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then it calls for baking, I think it's soda. Yep, yeah, just a teaspoon yes. of baking soda. And then the last uh, dry ingredients is the chocolate chips. I, it calls for um, three quarter cup. I find that's way too many. You don't need that. That's, and again, that's more sugar. So I would cut it as down as much as you can. Honestly, you don't even, I don't even think you need them at all if you don't want, if you just want a chocolate muffin because it's a very tasty muffin. Um, so I just put two third cups in because you know the kids do like to have a little chocolate crunch in there. And then it calls for um, sprinkling chocolate chips on the top. I never do that. Um, just because I don't think it's needed, but it does look nice if you're presenting it to guests or something to have a little sprinkle on the top, but I don't think it's necessary personally. So I put, today I'm just going to put two thirds. Some days I, you know, depends how, how good the kids are, you know, maybe it's just none. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I don't know if anybody else has shopped for measuring cups lately, but have you noticed that they come in two thirds sizes now, three quarter cup sizes now? I don't know if that's new or not, but in my day, I never, I never saw that before. So it's kind of nice to have all these different options now. Same with teaspoons, they have all the different sizes. So, so then you do want to stir up the dry ingredients first so that that gets uh, mixed up. So. Do that. 
And then the wet ingredients is next. I already have half a cup of, I think half a cup of milk and a half a cup of uh, oil. I used um, canola oil today. Last time I made these, I used avocado oil and it worked out real well. I thought it turned out pretty nicely. So that's an option. Then a whole cup, here's some healthy part to it. Some, a yogurt, whole cup of uh, plain yogurt. I used Greek, there's more protein in Greek. And sometimes I'll play around with the flavor of yogurt. Some, I put in strawberry once and just has a little hint of strawberry or I put vanilla in um, and that gave it a little flavor too. But today I just had plain. So, you know, the point about vanilla is a good one, not just for flavoring, but because it also enhances sweetness without adding sugar. That's true. That is a good point. Yeah. So I put it, and then I do, I do like vanilla. It calls for a teaspoon. I get a generous teaspoon. I already poured it in here. And then the, uh, the last thing I'll put in is an egg and Here's my cute little egg. I'll just show today's stamp is it says head and picked. There we go. <laughs> I have a local farmer that drops off eggs every Wednesday at our house. It's just the best. So let's see here. And then you whisk it. And I have a cute little whisk I'll use. Just so it's not as splashy. By the way, all of these recipes that she's demonstrating are going to come out to you in the email that I'll send out after class. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then you just pour it in and you stir it with the, again, I have the KitchenAid. I don't know if anybody else has a KitchenAid, but it, I only use it for bacon. And if I go anywhere beyond two, everything's all so I don't know what you need the higher levels for. There must be something else I, I don't know how to do with this. So I just put it at one and you can see it's already, it's already splashing a little bit, but it's still, it's nice that you don't have to do it yourself. And then you don't want to over mix it. So I ended up, I ended up just turning it off after a while because I don't know, the bottom of a KitchenAid, a lot of times it doesn't grab everything. So rather than just keep it on and keep stirring, I'll just do the, the rest of it by hand. So it doesn't get overworked. So you're not really beating that. No, I don't really beat. I just stir it up. Just fold, almost a fold. Mm -hmm. I suppose if you beat it up, it'd be a fluffier muffin, possibly. I don't, I don't know. I think that's true. I think that's the difference between, one of the differences between a muffin and a cupcake. Ah, okay. And that's it. You just get all the ingredients wet and I have the mini muffin tin. Now these I don't have the muffin liners for so I had to spray it. The one thing I don't like about this is I don't like spraying them but if you use the muffin holders I find that the muffin tops always go on the muffin tin so they stick like crazy. So I don't know if anybody has any other tips but I do have to spray it with the oil and I'm just not a big fan of that because I feel like the oil gets on the muffin a little bit so it just has that oily you know taste and it's oil but but it's nice because you can use the portion sizes so now you have a smaller muffin that you're tempted with versus a large muffin and if you really want to you can have two so there you go and all it is is you know filling your muffin tin so you can just do it i do it to be that much i'll show you in a second and even filling with this recipe anyway, even filling this much, you're still gonna get quite a spread of a muffin top, but I like muffin tops, so that's okay with me. <laughs> so, so that's we're really- talking, When we were on the online the other day, we were talking about muffin tops and muffin top tins. Yes, let me see, I just lost the camera here. There we are. Yeah, the tins, so. There's lots of uses for muffin tins. I didn't know, I don't know if you guys realize this, but I found a website that said over 40 uses for muffin tins, which were, was really fun. So I did put together some other uses just to give you ideas, especially with the summer, there might be some really fun ones for you to try. Um, so Pam, I don't want to get you off track on onto that. You might have wanted to talk about that later, but I specifically wanted to ask you because we spoke briefly about the muffin top 
tins. Yes. And your experience with those. So I thought since you were talking about wanting a big top, you would maybe talk That's about right. that a minute. Yes. I used to have a muffin top tin. So I, and I tried it. I didn't really like it as much because I think the flavor in the top comes from, must come from the bottom of the muffins ingredients kind of getting into the top. So it, they just turned out kind of dry and just kind of blah. So I don't even have the tin anymore. I wasn't a big fan. So I'd rather just make a whole muffin and tear off the top. <laughs> just, so that's much more appetizing. So yeah. Good tip. Good to know. Yep. Does anybody else have muffin top tins that you experimented with? Do you remember that Seinfeld episode about the muffin tops? I think those muffin top tins became popular after that. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I don't, I, did they end up making just, I don't know the episode, remember the episode, if they end up just making muffin tops or, I don't remember how it ended, but it was funny. Natalie, do you remember since you commented on this? Do you remember about I, th I think what happened was um, uh, Kramer was selling the muffin tops. <laughs> okay. so, I think they got rid of the bottoms and he was selling the tops. He was selling the tops. <laughs> yeah. They need to bring that show back. <laughs> so something else I could show you with the, in regards to the muffin, if you make a regular size muffin, um, they do have these nowadays, these silicone line. They've had them actually for a very long time. And I tried them years ago and I wasn't that impressed. I thought they kind of smelled funny and they stuck to the muffin quite a bit, but I gave it another shot. And these uh, did work much better than the ones I had years ago. I've only used them once though, so I don't know how well they keep up. They keep, um, but that is an option if you don't want to use the paper. They do have these that it, so far it's, it's worked pretty well. And they're kind of, they come in really all sorts of colors and, and themes and size, and, well, I don't know about sizes, but, um, you know, I guess that's it, colors and themes. Pam, <laughs> so. yeah, do they stand up by themselves or do they have to be used in the tin? They do stand up by themselves, yeah. So you could put those on a baking sheet without a muffin tin. Is that the way you could do it if you didn't have a muffin tin? I don't know. If, I think they would kind of, they're kind of floppy. So they I would fall over that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. I don't, you know, once it starts to break down, I'd recommend you toss it because I don't, it's silicone. So I don't want silicone to leach into my muffins either. So I got, I, I watch silicone products real carefully. I used to have silicone mats for baking other things. And they wore out so quickly. I just stopped buying them because it was getting expensive and I just went back to parchment paper. Mm -hmm. So just keep an eye out for, for that because mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem that safe if it starts to break down. So, yeah. But that's about it for this muffin. Muffins are super simple. That's why I do like making muffins. It's a nice option for a quick breakfast, especially none of my family will eat cereal. So a quick breakfast is kind of a challenge and I'm not a big fan of protein bars. So, you know, that in a pinch maybe, but I'd rather have a quick muffin. And I've found a lot of other healthier options that pack a little more protein and, and substance for their day as well that I'm still experimenting with, but so far so good. So just to get them something quick and not um, packaged, <laughs> so. So Pam, can you hold that hold that tin up again? I, I wanted to just see how you have that filled again. The, the muffin, the this one. No, uh, the, the the one that you filled with the chocolate. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> just I only put a couple, but that's how I fill it. Okay, so that's really really um, mounded up. That's much different than what you would do with a cupcake, right? Yes. I think so. And this is what, this is how they turn out when you fill it like that. So you still get, cause I, again, I like a muffin top. So you still get a nice little muffin top when you fill it pretty much to just a nice rounded top there, you know, but like I said, be, be sure to grease the top of your muffin tin because otherwise you'll be scraping your muffin tin, the top of it. So that would be good with nuts in them. Yeah. Walnut. I mean, yeah, walnuts would be good. That would be good. That's a little more, you know, nutrition right there. Do you have any problem with the chocolate 
bits going to the bottom? No, I don't. No. And that was something I was going to mention about um, chocolate chips. This doesn't tell you, so you, you would assume a normal size chocolate chip, but I find this recipe really mini chocolate chips are just fine. And that you don't need all that chocolate chunk. And actually it makes it more difficult to put in the little mini pans if you decide to use that size. So the, I, I'd recommend the mini chocolate chips for sure. But no, I've never had them um, problems. They, they, they seem to disperse evenly. Okay. Has anybody else had that problem? What about with blueberries? Anybody have trouble with their blueberries just going to the bottom of the muffin? If you coat them with um, flour, that helps. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm understanding also. Coating them, coating them with flour would be helpful for any fruit like that that you didn't want to have sink. Well, any fix-in really. I think it's any fix-in that's why you put it into the dry ingredients so that it helps uh, disperse more evenly in, in the, if I, I think that's what the theory is. Because if you, if you notice, most recipes will say put that add-in with the dry ingredients first, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why. I didn't realize it makes sense. It's the flour that coats it. So yeah, that makes sense. You know, I'm really thankful to have a chocolate muffin recipe now because you cannot, in the wild, wild west of the internet, you really don't know what you're going to get. The other day I downloaded a double chocolate muffin recipe because I had in mind the muffins that I get at the coffee shop where I go. And I was going to try to emulate that. And this recipe called for three quarter for just a dozen muffins. It called for three quarters of a cup of, of uh, cocoa powder. And it called for two cups of chocolate chips, two cups oh of gosh. chocolate chips. Now I didn't use two cups of chocolate chips like Pam. I didn't use two cups, not even close. And they were still so they just were not that good. So I really felt like I was wasting the ingredients. It's really a good recipe is worth its weight in gold. Yeah. Having good taste and not wasting ingredients. So I'm glad we'll have your recipe, a, t a well tested one. Yeah, yeah. And you can, and like you said, just, I would just change out the sugar a little if you want. And I think if, you know, if you do that, it's really not, it's not that bad. I mean, it's got the yogurt, it has milk, uh, you know, the, if you make it with that whole wheat, that white whole wheat, it's, it's, you know, not too bad. <laughs> too bad. And we do have a comment here from um, Pat who said you can substitute some unsweetened applesauce on a one for one for the sugar, but you have to reduce the liquids. So there may be some recipes out there that actually do that because where there's some questions about how do you, how do you, how much uh, reduction of liquids. So um, Pat, I don't know if you have a recipe that you would want to share, or maybe there's one that we can find that we can send in the email after this class that you can experiment with. But again, it would be ones that we haven't, we haven't experimented with. Hey, Linda, you have an idea? Since you have yogurt in your muffins, do they need to be refrigerated after you've cooked them? It doesn't say so, and I, I don't. Um, I'm, I'm guessing when you bake it, it probably makes it uh, shelf safe, or I could be wrong, <laughs> and we've just lucked out. <laughs> but no, I've never have. And they, they last probably really only a day, two days would be how long I would leave them out anyway, and they do freeze really, really well. So if you feel like you don't want to leave them out, just freeze them, and if it's a mini muffin size, it wouldn't take long to thaw. And if it's regular, you know, just a little bit more. That's the other thing when you do bake mini size, you know, you do need to cut down on the baking time. So just mine only took about 10, 12 minutes max with the mini size. So I just took that toothpick and saw that it was uh, clean coming out. The full size took quite a bit longer, 15, 20 minutes, probably because when you make it with that whole wheat as well, it, it just makes it take a little bit longer than, than usual. I've, I've substituted the oil with applesauce before, but not the sugar, because it's unsweetened applesauce. Mm -hmm. How sweet could that be? I mean, I don't know. I've never tried it as a sweetener. I've just tried it as an oil substitute. Yeah. I'm looking for strategies on that. 
Yeah, but that's what I've done too. I just used it in place of the oil. It's Alberta. Oh, Alberta, you got in. Okay, great. I, sorry, we <laughs> had a we ordered we got a new mattress and it just came, of course, when the program started. So. <laughs> Okay, so can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. I substitute the unsweetened applesauce for the oil, or sometimes I'll use half and half. What, half what, is that, what, what, is, what is the proportion? Uh, proportions? How much oil, how much applesauce? Well, whatever your recipe calls for oil, just use that much applesauce. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in a muffin for sugar substitute. Let's see. The only ones that I've made that I've substituted the applesauce are actually applesauce um, oatmeal muffins. And so they don't use any sugar. They just use the applesauce. Use the applesauce. So if you're really wanting a, a less sweet kind of muffin. So it, it looks like somebody here is saying reduce the liquid by a quarter cup will do the trick if you're doing a one to one ratio in liquid in uh, recipes. Hmm. So I don't know, that's kind of a rule of thumb. Can you repeat that what you just said? Oh, it's a one to one ratio, as Pat was saying earlier, and then typically reducing the liquid by a quarter cup will do the trick. Thank you. I and if you, when you mix all of your like the when I had my whole bowl of liquid, you take take it out of that or a certain mm -hmm. liquid. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't know. Getting a more um, looking for a more precise. Yeah. And if you're baking at high altitude, you always reduce the amount of sugar by uh, three tablespoons per cup of sugar, and I use a little less leavening, whatever. Yes, I've heard that. Yeah, leavening. I've definitely heard that. I didn't know that about the sugar. So here's another guideline. Um, applesauce can be used to enhance sweetness if you prefer. Um, you can use you can use up to one and a half cups of applesauce for every cup of sugar, but then again, you're reducing the wet ingredients. So in many recipes, applesauce can be substituted for sugar equally one for one, but it doesn't really say a lot. You know, what I'll do here is try to find some specific recipe for uh, using sugar in, or applesauce in place of sugar. And so you have proper pr proportions. Try to find that before I send the email out, okay? I'll give you some guideline, okay. So you have another recipe for us? Oh, not that I was going to, not that I had to make. That you were going to talk about, maybe. Yeah, here. the lemon, a lemon, um, which uses yogurt as well. It's using um, the le lemon uh, juice, lemon zest, poppy seed, lemon poppy seed muffin. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what our second favorite. Um, and it's basically the same. You just dry, you know, all the dry ingredients first, and then you add your liquid and mix it up and... The, you know, the process is pretty much the same. That's what's nice about muffins too. You just can just change up the ingredients. Um, and I, I gave you that recipe, right, Deb? So you can share yes. that. Yes, yeah. so sending that recipe out too. Yeah. And the same thing with the flowers, I would mix them up. Um, it's, uh, that's definitely, and we've experimented with a lot of different lemon uh, recipes and that's definitely our favorite. And that one too, I've done lemon, uh, you know, if you really like lemon, I've done lemon yogurt in it. And that was, that oh. was really That sounds delicious. And I would not think that yogurt would at all be a problem. Yogurt's fermented. So it's actually, you, you make yogurt by keeping it at room temperature. So it does its fermentation thing. So it's really going to be okay. It's kind of like cheese. It's a fermented dairy product. Cheese is fine out of the refrigerator too. So yeah. yeah. So who has ever made gluten-free muffins? Anybody here a gluten-free person that looking for an option there? No, okay. So just, yeah. 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 you have? Yeah, tell us about that experience. Yeah, um, again, 
King Arthur, <laughs> they make a gluten-free flour that turned out really well um, when I made it. I, that one I did make a blueberry muffin muffin with. And it, I did follow the, the uh, directions for the recipe from the packaging because I didn't really want to trust anything else out there. It's so overwhelming to find a gluten-free recipe and all different opinions, but I just stuck with what King Arthur said right on the package and it turned out really nicely. So I would recommend it for anyone that wants to try a gluten-free muffin for sure. Was, was that a mix or was that a the flour? It was flour just, on the flour. Okay. The King Arthur. Yeah. So there is a King Arthur I think there's a King Arthur one for one and a King Arthur gluten free. Is that? I was reading about that a little bit. So it's a gluten free. Okay. I think it's, is it a blue package in the back when I had, it was more of a navy blue or blue packaging. So I was reading. Um, it's, it's a, uh, my name's Karen. Uh, it's a blue package of gluten free King Arthur yeah. flour. And I found when I make, anything baking wise, if I let it sit for 30, 20 or 30 minutes before I actually put it in the pan and cook it, it seems to work better for some reason. I don't know if it's because the liquid gets into the flour better, kind of mixes it up better rather than doing it and putting it right away into the oven. And you said that's when you're doing the gluten-free or any? No, gluten-free. Gluten-free. I have bought a, several of those gluten-free flours, but I haven't really experimented baking with, with many of them. But I have that flour that you just talked about, Pam, I'm going to experiment with that this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to go, you know, to get away from the wheat as well. So I'm trying to experiment with them. I've made big things like dumplings and so on, but I haven't done any baking, like breads, but I'm going to try them. Right. Yeah. Well, Marjorie, let us know how they work out. Okay, I will. <laughs> there is a, so there. There's one here that's a blue a blue bag that says all purpose flour, gluten free all purpose flour. Is that the one we're talking about? Because there's also that's one that's one for one baking flour. I don't think it, it wasn't the one for one. I think it was just the basic gluten flour from King Arthur. Yeah, I don't remember a one to one. I'd have to see the packaging to really confirm it, but I don't, what's the one to, what's the one to one mean, I wonder? I don't even Well, know. I think that what, and I did a little reading on gluten-free and I'll send you some recipes for that as well, but there must be some, I think there's xanthan gum oh. in this one. And that might make a difference because what the person said who was baking those said, if you don't have the one-to-one -one baking flour, not the gluten-free, but the one-to-one, -one, then at least try to find an alternative brand that, oh, that has xanthan gum in it. So it must be something about the, the xanthan gum. Yeah, I'll see if I can quickly find what I have or did have. So this is the, this is the one-to-one. No. Nope. That's not what I used. I, I used um, definitely just gluten-free measure for measure flour. Okay. That's what this says. Yeah. So this one says it, it does include the xanthan gum and uh, ideal for food like cookies, cakes, brownies. So it sounds like it's just another, uh, an additional ingredient that might enhance any of your baked goods. So. Yeah. Worth a try. It would be interesting to try them side by side. That's what you got, Marjorie. You bought that. All right. Huh. Very good. Okay. Um, the um, hold on. <laughs> My picture. This Bob's Red Mill has the one to one, and it has the anthem gum in it. And then they all—that's gluten free. And then they also have gluten-free all-purpose, which has no xanthan gum. Hmm. And I think you use this like if you want to make bread or something that's kind of yeasty. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of interesting. You have to, I find it kind of confusing. I have to sit down and think about it every time I decide to cook something, which one I want to use. <laughs> well, you know, but, I wonder, 
if you find the King Arthur that I'm talking about anyway, look and see if they have a muffin recipe on the bag. <laughs> that might tell you that's that's the one to use for muffins as well, because that's that's where I got the recipe. So well, I almost exclusively use the one with the xanthan gum for pretty much everything. Okay. Um, but if I was trying to like make it, like try to make a pizza dough or bread or something, then I where you have to add yeast, then I would use the um, the all purpose without the xanthan gum. Although I've made pizza dough and bread with the one with the xanthan gum too, but uh, I'm not the greatest baker, so. <laughs> Pam, is this the one? Uh, I don't. See. Let me go to let me go to gallery. Oh. I don't hang on one second here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I had. Okay, and that's the one that has the muffin recipe on the back. Okay. I yeah, mean, is I, that what you're saying? That's the one that has the muffin recipe. Oh, that's uh, when I yeah, and and I hope the packaging hasn't changed because this was a year ago. <laughs> so oh, it looks like it has deep dark fudgy brownies on it. Yeah. So that that and maybe maybe they switched out the recipe, or but that tells me that would be for your sweet your sweet bread or your, you know your sweet breads and and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. And I think someone just posted that King Arthur absolutely go to their website and it would tell if you look you know look up uh, gluten free recipes and it'll tell you very specifically I'm sure which flours to use of theirs. Great idea. Yeah, yeah great idea to go for some recipes that are already tested. Yeah, and there's. I've rarely had a recipe I didn't like of theirs. And they have ratings and reviews so you can see what sounds good for what you want from that too. So, and the chat, I gotta mention the chat. You can always, they have the online chat with the bakers or the hotline, King Arthur. I've, I'm not paid by King Arthur, but it's, they are quite quite a nice baking community if you need help with anything as well, so. You see, Alberta says that using buttermilk with oatmeal makes excellent muffins. Hmm. Alberta, can you talk about that a minute? I think that was one of the first muffin recipes that I started baking some 60 years ago. And it was very simple. Just um, you soak the oatmeal in the buttermilk and uh, then start baking. And, and they were very good, very simple. You know, really not much to it, but they're very good with oatmeal with the buttermilk is excellent. And then would you put add-ins to the, that or just bake them the way they are? No, there's no reason why you couldn't, you know, if you like raisins or whatever, yeah. Oh, a chocolate a chocolate chip oatmeal muffin, like a chocolate chip cookie. Right, that sounds delicious. Is that an overnight soak, like the overnight oatmeals that are real popular? Or it wasn't at that time. I, I think, you know, I'm talking from memory, which... <clears throat> My old brain doesn't always do real well, but um, you just let it set for a certain amount of time, half hour or an hour or something. And so it started a little bit ahead of what you're ready to, to bake it. But yeah, just let There's, it soak up the buttermilk. Is there no other ingredients in it? Oh, yeah. It's flour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And other things. Can we look what at this in a second and see if this is close to what you might remember? I have one up here we could take a look at. This what is, kind of oats do you use? Just the regular. Um, oh, now this uses cook, quick cooking oats. So, but you could use rolled oats, I would imagine. Yeah, and that's just what I've always bought. So, now I don't have a Trader Joe's or anything. I I do have Sprouts now, so they handle the oats and the. And what am I trying to say? Anyway, yep. So this looks, does this look like it might be? Yeah, very, very much so. Right? Yeah. So it does soak the oats in buttermilk for 15 minutes. Yeah. And because they're the quick oats, so they're a little bit smaller. So I just generally buy the regular uh, cooking oats. And sometimes I'll put it in a food processor for a couple of swirls and uh -oh. break them up a little bit. And to me, that makes quick cooking oats. Yeah, absolutely. Just shake them up a little, grind them up a little. Okay. So I've, I've made those uh, same uh, muffins, but what I've done is uh, I did the unsweet applesauce instead of the sugar. 
to cut down on the sugar. Did you? But everything else is pretty much the same. Greg, did you replace all the sugar? Yeah. With applesauce? Yeah. So this calls for a half cup of packed brown sugar. Did you use like a half cup of applesauce one for one like that? Uh, it was unsweet. So I used a little more, a probably little uh, two thirds of a cup. Okay. And then you didn't reduce the liquid by any, any amount. No, I, I, I was hoping it would come out like a real muffin. <laughs> so I didn't want to change anything else. Yeah. I was yeah. afraid it would screw it up, but it I'm pre-diabetic. So I, anything that can ch reduce the sugar, I'm all for. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah, okay. it did. So I'm here and experiment, experiment a lot with these and every recipe is a little bit different. And that's what's cooking. That's what cooking is all about, right? It, it sure is. Yeah. And then if it works, you got to remember to write it down. Amen. Does that ever happen? You just make things and they turn out really well. And then, oops, I can't recreate, recreate that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, well, Pam, so on to some of those other fun related to, but not muffin yeah. recipes. Yeah, I, I came across uses for muffin tins, other uses for muffin tins, and some of them were so cute that I thought it'd be fun to share if we had time. So um, especially with summer coming up, it seems like uh, there's a lot of neat things you could do if you have guests over. Um, so one thing is, a, a, uh, well, I'll put this one aside. You, you could make um, a condiment tray. So you could put your mustard, ketchup, relish, whatever in a muffin tin, which would be really fun. Um, you could make a succulent tray, put a bunch of little succulents in the muffin tins or seedlings. If you're just starting your, your gardens, put seedlings in the tray. Um, votive holder. So you can have it, you know, put them outside or whatever for a nice outdoorsy feel with the candles or inside, whatever. And um, I thought this was really clever. I'm going to do this for my my younger kid is a snack tray. Fill it with all different snacks, which I think he'd get a real kick out of. And he could help fill different trays. Maybe grandkids would love to fill different trays with different things, you know, goldfish, raisins, you know, healthy and maybe some fun things too. And a, I don't know if anybody's ever, I've never made fondue, but a fondue tray was recommended. I thought that sounded fun if people do fondue anymore. So that was another suggestion. And my near and dear favorite was an art tray, because that's what I love to do. So you can get cups, find cups that fit your chins. That was a little tricky. You can have, you know, pencils or brushes and all different art supplies ready. And again, again that's kind of fun for grandkids as well to fill their little art tray with all different crafts and maybe buttons and you know beads and whatever and they can just pick different things from their tray and if you have these holders too that might be easier so they could share with other kids or other people if they want to because it's you know, not contained in one tray so, so don't throw were... away your old muffin tins what's that so don't throw away your old muffin tins. Exactly, exactly. Yes, like I have. <laughs> I, sh I should have kept all the ones I had that were kind of burned burned away in a way. So yeah, definitely have lots of uses for them. And there's websites that there's, like I said, 40, more, 40 or more uses. Some of them were kind of like, I don't know about that one, but <laughs> but they were, for, for the most part, they were real creative, creative uses. So. Great place to go. Pinterest, go to Pinterest and check oh, yeah. it out. And Get Set Up has classes on Pinterest if you've never used Pinterest, so you can get find your way around how to use Pinterest, but I'm sure they have a thousand ways to use muffin tins. Yeah. Thanks, Pam. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Appreciate you coming today, giving us ideas for how to make muffins. I know that I'm going to be filling my muffin tins more fully than I have in the past. I don't make them that often, but I'm thinking about trying that gluten-free that gluten-free flour and using um, sugar substitute and you, heaping it up to see just how I can get my muffins to turn out to be a healthy breakfast al alternative. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen back again and just show you a couple of additional bits of information that I found about, about muffins while we were putting this together. We talked about the most popular muffin. It is a blueberry muffin. And I thought you might be interested in America's Test Kitchen 
uh, results when they tested muffin tins. So with a six pan tin or a six cup tin that can go into a counter uh, oven, you know, one of those small ovens that you have, they recommend the Williams and Sonoma Gold Touch Pro Muffin Pan. And they went through all sorts of tests concerning how how big the cups were, how narrow or how deep, how they were shaped, how closely they were to one another, what the material was that they made the pan out of. So this one came in first and the OXO Good Grips came in first for a 12 cup pan. So if you're looking to replace your muffin tins, these are the two that you might wanna look for. And, and if you ever wondered as I did, what's the difference between a muffin and a cupcake? What I learned was that there's two different me methods. Muff the muffin method is when you take the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients separately and then combine them. And you only combine them just like Pam did, only until they're basically combined. You don't beat them, um, you don't beat them and, and cream them to death. So you want those lumps in there that's creating more of a crumbly texture in the muffin versus the creaming method where you cream the butter or the fat and the sugar and then add your dry and wet and dry ingredients and you get a much more um, a much more cakey or a more moist type of batter out of that. And I like this quote from the book Understanding Bacon. If it's too rich to tolerate a pat of butter, it's not a muffin. <laughs> Pretty good rule of thumb. And so here were some questions that I thought you might have as a result. And Pam, if you wanna to speak to any of these, that would be great. Can you make muffin batter in advance? Ever wonder that? So making muffin batter in advance. I don't know, I would think you could, but not cupcakes, cause you'd lose that airiness. But muffin batter, I would think you could, am I right? Yeah, actually what they said is that you should not have muffin batter in advance because it, the baking soda, the baking powder are both activated by the liquid. And when they sit in that liquid over a period of time, then they, they kind of go flat. Yep. Okay. And as far as muffin tins being lined or not, it's kind of an individual preference, but if you don't line them, then you're going to get a harder, more golden brown covering on the outside they'll be more protected if you use a liner. And it seems like the ideal, that should be ideal, amount of batter for a standard cup is three tablespoons. But I liked what you did because you're not hooked. That's not going over the top. And what causes holes or tunnels in muffins is when we overmix the batter. And that's when the leavening agents, the baking soda and the powder don't really work well. And how can you make a bakery style muffin? They have these freestanding paper cups that you can buy on Amazon and you can put them into your, into your muffin tin or into a regular, well, into something that would hold, but they are freestanding and you can fill them and have them overflow. And that's what they might look like. So you can use those and not need to use a tin, I believe. So anyway, those are some of the additional frequently asked questions for those who may be looking for uh, answers to pro possible problems with muffins. So that brings us to the end of our session today. And I wanna thank Pam you again for coming and, and doing this with us today. It was a lot of fun. Very and does fun. anybody have any further questions for Pam? about her muffin recipes. I'm wondering if she will teach uh, scone class again. The scone class? Uh-huh. Well, what do you say, Pam? You're being asked for an encore on scones. Sure, I, that sounds good to me. <laughs> I had the same question since I missed it. Yep, she'll be back. So we'll work on that. She said summer is a little more difficult, but we're working on the scheduling and whenever that's convenient for her. And she's also said that she's going to uh, teach us how to make bagels, an easy at home bagel recipe. So mark your calendar for June 18th. We're going to do that on that day. Deb, can you send this recipe, the oatmeal 
uh, the one what you find online. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yokia one? Yes. Yes, I will do that. I will send that recipe and a few others. Thank you. And you'll also, of course, get the ones that Pam talked about today, her chocolate muffin and her lemon poppy seed. Yeah, Linda. If it would impose on Pam to have to like reteach a class, since they record the class, could they ever just replay the recording of the previous class for some of us? Well, sure. Well, you can certainly request that. I don't know if we would replay it. That's a great question, though. Um, we've replayed other things, but yeah, that's a good thought. Glad to glad to entertain that one, Linda. Thank you. I've tried to get a class, but you have to be in the class to have the recording sent to you. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So they would have to be special right now. We not that uh, they would have to be this, the, we want people to come to classes. So we do have the um, speaker series and you might notice that those are being replayed. So we'll have to see though, because you're right when uh, Linda, somebody from the community is coming in, maybe that's, maybe that's a fair thing if they don't really want to come back and do it again live. So good thought. I appreciate you bringing that up. And yeah, I appreciate you all coming today. Yeah. I asked for a recording so I, my family can watch. I make them suffer through watching me teach a class. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's fun. Thanks. That's fun. Thanks, Pam. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Give Pam a round of applause for all of this. Thank, Thank you me. so much, Pam. Anytime. Yeah. My next class, Healthy Desserts That Taste Great Too, a little later this afternoon. And tomorrow, another member of our community, Leslie Lamb, is going to be here to talk about uh, easy cooking for one or two. So that should be very interesting. And on Friday, I'm going to try my hand at an easy, easy chicken curry recipe from a favorite chef that I, that I like to watch. So join me for that. And I'll send that email out with all of the recipes. Please give us a little feedback and check the schedule for additional new classes that are coming up. And don't forget to invite a friend and connect us to your community as well. And if you'd like to host an interest group, if you'd like to co-host any of that, you can, you can write to helpitgetsetup.io or don't forget my, my email address, Deb the Guy to Get Set Up. Io. Thank you so much for coming today. I look forward to seeing you in the next class. Have a great Thank day, you. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, Deb. It's Alma. Yes. <laughs> You've got a new email address. I've, I've got the other one already populated. I have to make a note of the new one. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's just they were trying, what they did was set us up with those kinds of email addresses so that they can monitor it a little bit and then they grab uh -huh. things off. So I don't, so I don't miss anything. They just, yes. It yeah. It was real interesting. I listened to uh, one of the wine classes last week Yeah. and I never got the class notes. And when I went back and I said, and he even told us to put, you know, hi, I'm blah, blah from whatever. And she said, well, we can't even see that you replied in the chat. So we have no indication that you were there. And then I started telling him, but he said this during the class and the guide, you know, the, the help person yeah. uh, put information in the chat. And I was expecting, you know, them to come back and say, oh yeah, we saw all of that. So yeah, obviously you were in the class. I don't know why our records didn't start, but no, they just kind of left me hanging. I didn't get, you know, any information on the, you know, I didn't get the recording of the class or the class notes. And I'm like, well, that's a little frustrating. Oh. So I told her, I said, I guess what I'm going to have to do is take a snapshot in each class of a screen oh. that shows that I was actually there. Because if the chat's not reflecting it, I don't know what else to do, you know? <laughs> yes, I can't imagine. So who did you, yeah. who did you speak with? Um, well, I was just talking with the uh, um, um, uh, a person that had uh, Sharon, I think, was the, the help person. She said, no, there's nothing in the chat. 
And um, sorry, I f- f- didn't realize you were still recording. So there's nothing, there's nothing in the chat. So we have no, you know, proof that 